Frequency, Chapter 8, Part 2. What? Addie asked. Of course we do! What do you bring? Wow! Twilight clapped her hooves. You even live on a world with similar atmospheric properties? Spike, are you recording any of this? The dragon facepalmed. You were in such a hurry to get up here, you made us leave our luggage in the train to be sorted by the servants. That includes my notebook, Twilight. Oh, no, 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 that won't do it all. Twilight's head swiveled about frantically. I can't ask questions without some means of writing down the answers. There has to be some way to... Aha! There was a flash of purple light that made vinyl shield her eyes. When she looked again, Twilight had disappeared. A second flash produced the princess a few feet away, standing with a hoof raised to one of Luna's rolling blackboards. This is perfect. I'm sure Princess Luna won't mind if I borrow a few of these for science. Spike raised his arms with an exasperated... Oh, here we go. Brace yourself, Addy. You're in it for the long run now. I don't mind answering questions. Addy replied with confidence in her tone. Don't be so negative, Spike. Twilight lectured. This is perhaps the most important scientific discovery of our lifetimes. And considering I'm an alicorn and you're a dragon, that could be a long time. You should be more appreciative of the unique opportunity. Vinyl tuned out the lecture and turned to Flash, who was in the process of rolling his eyes. So, you like eggheads, huh? He blushed and made a good showing of looking anywhere but at Twilight. Actually, I was kind of focused on the fact that she's really cute. Cute. Vinyl shot Twilight a studious look. Since Star's World appeared its age, and I can't tell you how excited he would be taking a part in this. We could be on the verge of a new age. What if Miss Longstaff's not the last alien to talk to us? I've never abused my royal status before, but I'll be a cockatrice's droppings before I let this unprecedented opportunity pass me by. If you'd be more attentive to my- Vinyl turned back to Flash with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, cute. That's the word. Flash winced and leaned in close, his voice dropping to a whisper. Hey, cut me some slack. I'm not even interested in her anymore. Oh yeah? She smirked and knuckled his mane. So, why act so jumpy around her? Shoving her leg away, he brushed his mane back into place. I'd like to see you not be nervous as all Tartarus went in the same room with the princess who rejected you for a date. Hey, no pity from me, Bullbutt. She replied with a dismissive wave of her hoof. I've never been rejected for a date. He glared at her. Why, because no pony asks you out? She flinched and crossed her hooves with a huff. No, I'm just too busy to go out on dates. Oh, really? So why did you- Okay, okay, I get it! Spike's shout broke through their conversation. He waved his claws at Twilight. Are you gonna lecture me all day? Or were you going to ask questions? Actually... Addie piped up cheerfully. I was quite enjoying the conversations. Both of them. Vinyl leaned into the table to glower at the radio. Not funny, Addie. Addie chuckled. I thought so. As much as I enjoy lecturing Spike. Twilight said with a smug grin at her assistant. His point is well taken. Have a seat, Miss Longstaff, and grab a snack. This could take a while. A snack? Addie scoffed. I don't get snacks. I've been eating the same exact thing for ages. Twilight's eyes lit up. Such as? Excuse me? The princess leaned forward, a piece of chalk already hovering by the board behind her. What is it you eat while in space? Oh, uh, fruits and vegetables, mostly. Tomatoes are a staple because they have protein and are easy to grow. Fascinating. The word tomatoes was written on the board as Twilight gazed with shining eyes at the radio. And how do you grow plants in space? <sighs> That's it. Vinyl threw her hooves up high. I'm gonna let you two brains talk. This kind of stuff is boring. Twilight let out a gasp. But don't you want to know more about Miss Longstaff's life in space? Think of all the- I don't want to talk about the details. Vinyl said as she stood from the table. I want to talk about Addie. You two have your nerdgasm. I'm gonna get out of this stuffy old castle for a while. She grabbed Flash's tail. Come on, Bolt Butt. She gave a jerk that brought him to his barrel. Hey! He tugged his tail free and stood, his face crimson. 
Why am I going to? Luna said you're supposed to be my escort, right? So let's go, escort. Vinyl turned to the radio. Talk to you later, Addy. Addy let out a huff. I'll have you know I was a C student. Hardly nerd material. She laughed. <laughs> Ciao, Vinyl. Have fun with your boyfriend. Well, if you must. Twilight said with a sigh, but her beaming smile came back in an instant. Now, Addy. Uh, I can call you Addy, right? The door closed, muffling the rest of the conversation. Vinyl mimes wiping sweat from her brow. Phew, close call. Come on, Flash. I need some food. Flash grumbled as he followed her. You could have handled that a little better. She is the princess, you know. And he just brushed her off. Relax. She said with a roll of her eyes. I got her pegged the moment she walked into the room. She doesn't want to be treated like royalty. <laughs> you know, for a guy who claims he used to have such a big crush on her, you sure didn't pay much attention. So I was blinded by her being adorable. Sue me. Flash caught up with her. And yes, used to have a crush on her. She grinned and bumped shoulders with him, almost knocking him into the wall. You sure didn't want to leave that room? Yeah, because I thought you were rude. Huh? Vinyl raised her sunglasses so she could properly bat her red eyes at him with as innocent a look as she could muster. Did I make you look bad in front of the mayor of your dreams? Flash let out a groan and lowered his head into a proper sulking position. Forget it. Let's just get to the cafeteria. Oh, I don't think so. She declared with her head raised. I'm tired of this place. We're going out. He shot her a dark frown. At what point did you decide me being assigned as your guard meant you could boss me around? From the moment I realized you'd get in trouble if you left me alone. She smirked at him. That means you gotta stick by me. And if I decide to not do what you want to do, too bad. The risks of me being alone are all on you. He thought on her statement for a few seconds before groaning. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Wow. Flash said as they left the Canterlot streets and entered the front doors of the restaurant. I haven't been to a Hayburger in ages. Vinyl looked around at the familiar lower-level restaurants, feeling very comfortable with the half-clean tables and greasy food. The pair of foals sobbing in the corner to their highly frustrated mother only added to the charm. It might not be fancy like the place you brought me, but it's what I like. Come on, let's play find the one clean table. I think you just made that up. He said with a smirk, following her to a booth by the windows. He looked very out of place in his golden armor. Vinyl couldn't help smiling, as the foals in the corner stopped their crying to point out the royal guard in that excited way that makes parents blush and head for the exit. Flash shot the foals an amused smile and waved as they were ushered out. I love it when they do that. Vinyl sat back in the lumpy seat, perfectly content. Why is that? He shrugged. I remember when I was a foal, you know? I was always excited when I saw a guard march by. Seeing that kind of excitement in foals just makes me feel good about myself. Hello again, Scratch. A donkey waitress with a serving tray walked up to them with a tired smile. Haven't seen you here in over a week. I was starting to wonder. Hey, Luis! Vinyl waved with a grin. Yeah, I've been a little busy lately. Do the usual. Flash blinked. You ordering for me? Luis gave him a cheeky wink. Don't you worry, non-cutie. Vinyl's got great taste buds. Two regulars coming right up. Flash waited until she was in the kitchen to loosen a smile. Cutie. <laughs> Sometimes I wish ponies would stop calling me things like that. Oh, it's so bad! All the mares think I'm cute! <laughs> Woe is me! Yeah, yeah, I get it. He rolled his eyes and flexed his wings. You kid, but do you know what it takes to gain respect when all the other guards keep calling you a pretty cult? I had to work twice as hard to get half the respect. Vinyl studied him for a moment. Gotta admit, your size doesn't exactly intimidate. Although I can say from experience that you're a lot heavier than you look. I know, I've got that delicate Pegasus look. He brushed a hoof through his mane and sighed. I can't help that I inherited mom's features. Luis appeared before Vinyl could respond. Two double patio burgers with extra onions and supersized hay fries, plus bubble colas. She set the tray between them. 
Before Flash could react from his wallet, Vinyl hoofed over the bits. Enjoy! Hold on to this one, Vinyl. He looks like a keeper. As if! Vinyl and Louise shared a laugh, the former just noticing the touch of pink in Flash's cheeks. Thanks, Louise. Flash lifted his oat burger, studying it as if it might be poisonous. What's the matter, soldier? Vinyl used her magic to grab her own burger. I thought you said you used to go to Hayburger. She took a big bite. Yeah, until I realized how bad this stuff is for me. He considered the burger for a few more seconds, but finally sighed. <sighs> what the hey? Vinyl swallowed her bite and heaved a sigh. Ah, oh, such a greasy, fatty, improper goodness. Oh, how I missed it. I gotta admit, Flash said with a breadcrumbed encircled grin. It sure hasn't lost its appeal. The two ate in silence for a few minutes, delighting in the taste of cheap junk food. Vinyl relished in every bite, making sure to focus more on the fries than the burger as part of her best-for-last eating strategy. Flash ate just as slowly, though it seemed more because he was hung up on proper eating etiquette than a desire to prolong the experience. Seeing this planted a curious thought in Vinyl's head. So, where are you from, Bullbutt? He paused, some fries hovering in his open mouth as he stared at her. You want to know more about me? That's what I said. She gestured invitingly. If I'm going to be stuck with you for the foreseeable future, I might as well know who you are in terms other than Royal Guard and Dork. <laughs> Don't forget cute. He added with a small smile. He ate a couple more fries as he considered his answer. I was born in Seattle, but my parents moved out before I was old enough to remember the place. I grew up in a town just south of Philadelphia called Little Knothole, and the little part isn't an exaggeration. Huh. What made them decide to make a big change like that? He shrugged. Uh, Dad always said he didn't like living in the city, and Mom claimed she hated the cold. I always had the feeling they weren't telling me the full story. Vinyl nodded as she finished off an improperly large mouthful of burger. She had to take a big gulp to get it all down, and grinned at Flash's raised eyebrow. So, what did they do? Flash shook his head with a disdainful sigh. They're both realtors. Oh, wow, that does sound boring. He chuckled. Believe me, it is. So, are they still around? Yep. He took a sip from a soda. Still selling ramshackle homes for inflated prices. I guess I shouldn't complain. I had a pretty easy full hood because of it. That's the reason why I wanted to join the Royal Guard. Vinyl blinked and studied him from over the remnants of her burger. Because you had an easy full hood? I, I know, that sounds strange. He averted his gaze and toyed with one of his last hay fries. I just realized early on that Mom and Dad were giving me everything in life on a silver platter. They never challenged me to take responsibility for myself or anything. It was pleasant, I, I, I guess. But as I listened to their stories of how they got where they were, I realized that life won't give me handouts forever. I don't see what any of that has to do with joining the Royal Guard, she said. Despite her easy tone, she was leaning over the table and watching him intently. Flash shrank a little from her attention. It's just... I wanted to be responsible, you know, to prove that I didn't need mom and dad's bank account. Someday, I'm going to have a family of my own, and I want to be able to support that family. I need to know that I can handle it, and being a guard is a pretty demanding job all around. Besides, he added with a blush, I always thought the uniform looked cool. Vinyl sat back, her entire body feeling heavy. His answer circled through her head again and again, and she found she really liked it. It reminded her of a certain other pony she used to know. The thought brought a warm smile to her face. Flash fidgeted in his seat and stared out the window. Yeah, I know, it's... strange. No. Vinyl pulled up her sunglasses and leaned forward. It's not strange at all. I like it. He glanced at her with the slightest of blushes. No, you're just saying that. No, really. Vinyl bowed her head as she thought of a gray face, a purple mane, and an ever-exasperated smile. Her thoughts turned to a quiet night in an attic with a radio, spun hunched over it beneath a blanket, 
and listening to the static. Her smile broadened. It's really a good reason. Flash was staring at her. She coughed and finished off her burger. He smiled. Thanks, Vinyl. That means a lot more to me than you can know. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't get all sappy on me. She rubbed her face with the napkin and took a long drink of her soda. Okay, but, but now it's your turn. <laughs> all right. How'd you get your cutie mark? I just can't get enough of conversations like that. It's just so heartwarming. It's usually the slice of life stuff that I just enjoy. Anyways, let's get on to our donators that are full of life. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Ryan, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Matchbook 09, Jack TF, Darkside, Red, and Arles, Blake, Minar, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Duhex, Sorvet, the Mordor, Dominic, Carlyle, Reverend, Sub 952, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Rizal, Shadow Moon, Louis GD, Chance of Quest, Pixmunk 369, Bobcat GGF, Murder Prince, and many more beautiful people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and love life to the fullest.